like something has locked the door to your blessings? In Matthew 16, Jesus promised he would give the keys of the kingdom to those who follow him. Today we'll hear a prophetic word that you had, Dick, at our Dominion Conference about receiving spiritual keys. These keys will unlock those doors. Stay tuned, this is Lifeline Today. Welcome to the program. So good to have you with us today. Jonah, got a good program coming up because we're going to be talking about a very, very important subject that actually came up at Dominion Conference, didn't it? Yes, it did. And actually, it was the very first night as we were worshiping, Dick, you had a prophetic word. Actually, you said the Lord dropped something in your heart very strongly. And just very said, loud. Here's the keys. Here's the keys. It was funny. <laughs> it wasn't here are the keys. It was like, well, here's, here's the, the keys. keys. <laughs> and it was so loud. And it, it really took me back. And I was almost stunned for a while thinking, oh, this is so strong. Heard it once. Yeah. So strong, so clear. And then the next thought is, what? What, what keys? keys? <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> so, you know, we did actually find out more that night. Well, we did. And, uh, and then uh, Pastor Len Zoderman came up right after your word. We're going to hear both of these words. He talked about how keys are revelation. And, uh, and then the implications of that um, just in that service just worked out. And I, know, I really believe it's going to be uh, key for those that are watching, for many people who have felt things have been locked up, promises have been yeah. locked up. You know, just the things that they've been believing for have been locked up, desires, and also prophetic words have been locked up. You know, there's a scripture for this found in Deuteronomy 29:29. 29, 29. So it's a nice reference to remember, but it says the hidden things belong to God, mm -hmm. but the revealed things belong to the men, to the sons of men. Mm -hmm. So what it's saying is what if God has revealed it to you, then he's also given you ownership of mm -hmm. it. He's given that to you. Isn't yeah. that an interesting scripture? And it's found in Deuteronomy 20, 29, 29. Yeah. And, uh, but in our situation, Joan, we felt that it had a broader implication. I think it has an application for every person, and that was every person in that conference. I believe it has an application for you, mm -hmm. that God wants to go open things for your lives that have previously, or seems to be, they were locked or withheld from you. And revelation is one of the keys that God uses. Mm -hmm. You get insight I'm talking about spiritual, heavenly insight into the situation, uh -huh. and that will set a chain of events into effect. And you know, interestingly, many times these, revelation com these revelations come when you're in the corporate gathering. It's true, because isn't there's it? an anointing there that breaks open things that wouldn't happen if you were by yourself. You know, come to think of it, Joan, that's true for me. Yeah. It's very often when we're doing a conference or we're doing something special mm -hmm. in a broadcast and there's this environment where there's a lot of praise, a lot of worship, mm -hmm. a lot of prayer, a lot of exhortation, and then the environment, the atmosphere changes. And it's very often in that environment, I hear the voice mm -hmm. of the Lord. It's either that or when I'm spending a, a, an extended period of time in prayer uh -huh. and in worship myself privately. And again, I'll hear something, but not like I did that particular time at Dominion Conference. It was so loud. It was like, it almost made me turn around. You know, I knew better, but I <laughs> almost, turned, that's how clear it was. Well, we're going to go into the Dominion Conference again. We just had a wonderful time there last summer. You've got to be with us the next Dominion Conference. Yeah. We're going to hear a little bit about here's the keys. One of the words that God gave me for this conference is that he wants to unlock what is in the spiritual realm, things that the enemy has locked up. And he says he wants to loose them. And they're, they're for the kingdom. He wants to loose them for the kingdom. So as Francis and Joan are sharing, I heard the word. I'm saying, I'm serious. I heard it so clear and so loud. It said, here are the keys. But I didn't hear him like, yeah. What I heard was like the Lord was saying, I'm giving you the keys right now. And you know what I want to do? I want to do a prophetic act. Have anybody, y'all got keys? Yeah. Who's got keys? Let's take them. Because we're going to declare God's keys have been given to us. We're going to unlock what has been locked. Anybody here experienced some things locked you want to see loosed? What does the Bible say? The Bible says we can bind, and in heaven it will be bound on earth. We can loose in heaven, it will be loosed on earth. How many know that? We have that authority. It is authority. So you got keys? You know, this is a, this is a natural key. I, I understand that. 
But what we're doing is we're focusing our faith on a spiritual key that God has given to us. And so say this corporately. Say, Lord Jesus, I receive the keys to unlock what the enemy has held back. I loose it now in my life, over my household, for the kingdom of God, for my church, for the leaders of this nation. I unlock the mysteries of the kingdom of God now. I do it in Jesus' name. The keys loose. The blessing of God. The favor of God. The new thing that Pastor Francis told us. We loose the new thing in this place tonight. In Jesus' name, give the Lord a good shout of praise. Hallelujah. Pastor Lynn, prophecy. Earlier I was thinking about the keys. And uh, Jesus said, I'll give to you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. It spoke about binding and loosing, but the keys, I believe, are keys of revelation. The moment that you have a spirit of revelation and a, and a revelation of Jesus hits you, a revelation from Jesus hits you, you've been given a key of God into this realm. Now here's the key. <clears throat> the key is in the environment that we're in. The mistake that we could make in a conference like this is to look at people who are speaking on the stage or whatever and think, oh, they've got the keys. We don't have the keys. The key to understand is that when Saul went to the place of the prophets, he began to prophesy, even though he wasn't a prophet. Because he went into a realm where there was a corporate anointing and he stepped into a place that he could not ever enter into in himself. Part of the purpose of this meeting has a dominion realm to it. It's about our nation. It's about the opening of rivers. It's about the opening of realms. It's, it's to deal with things in a heavenly realm. Now what that means to you is that you're coming into this place. And as you come into this place, just like as you look at those LED lights up there, see how in a sense there's two, four, six, there's seven little you know, sublights within that one light. And in a sense, they kind of create a collective stream of light. But, but there's individual lights. In the same way that if one of those lights began to just shine on you, one of them, and it was God dropping down revelation upon you. And on somebody else, God began to drop down a light of revelation upon the next one, and the next one, and the next one. And all of a sudden, a collective revelation of God begins to be birthed in your life, in the life of one to another. And all of a sudden, what that becomes, it becomes a pathway of heaven into the earth. The reason I say this is because I believe in these days, you're going to experience the opportunity for the spirit of wisdom and revelation to come upon you. And in it, what's going to happen is it's going to open up keys Keys represent authority. And when Jesus drops a key of revelation into it, it means he's going to give you dominion, the right to rule and reign in that place. He's going to give you an authority in that place to move into a realm of heaven in earth. And so my exhortation to you is, don't so much look at the people who are at the front, but look to Jesus, look to the lights that are shining, and drink from the spirit realm, and have your spirit open, have your eyes open, and be connected into a realm where all of a sudden you say, man, I'm thinking about things I never thought before, as the treasures of God are being moved and are being delivered into your life. Amen? Because that's what's going to happen in these days. Keys are being delivered into your heart through the spirit of wisdom and revelation. Amen? Praise the Lord. You know, it was great, Joan, because many people that attended Dominion Conference, and there, it was full, if you recall, it was a very good turnout. Yeah. Uh, so many of them said to us, God spoke to me about something. Mm -hmm. God spoke to my life, and I, I see now this is where God wants to open something for me, you know. That is really the, the byproduct of what we just heard, coming into a conference like that. Mm -hmm. 
and God opening revelation. I just want to read that scripture because this is one, the key New Testament scripture that we refer to. And as a matter of fact, the, in the Old Testament, the thing about keys is often referred to as the key of David, which yes. it references uh, worship, intimate worship and praise in the presence of God very often. Mm -hmm. But uh, I'll give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. And really, here's the situation. If God reveals something to you about why something is withheld or why something is locked, sometimes it's sickness, why you're sick. Yeah. And, uh, in, and I'm talking about in a spiritual realm as well as the natural, for that yeah. matter. You have the key to change that. You have authority to. That's right. And, uh, and God shows you how to take authority of those things. Exactly. But Dick, I, I just want to refer to a scripture too in Hebrews 10, 25, where it says to us to not forsake the assembling of ourselves together as is the manner of some. And especially in this day and age, people uh, have chosen not to be a part of a, you know, a corporate gathering, a local church or whatever. But I think it's so important to be a part of a a local church or to be in conferences where the worship and the praise brings the presence of God. And it's almost like in that atmosphere, there's a treasure chest that's opened. And for every person who has a need, there's a key that we can pick out of that treasure chest or that God hands us, you know, by revelation. And uh, I know that many times we've been in places where, you know, someone is preaching the word and you'll have 50 people listening to the word and you'll have uh, 50 answers or things that God has spoken Welcome to them to people, because yeah. he'll speak something to you in where your need is. And yeah. so it's so important to be in these gatherings like that. You know, Joan, the, uh, Jesus said it on a couple occasions. He said, where two or three are gathered in my name, there am I yes. in the Amen. midst of them. Why? He's everywhere. Why is mm -hmm. he saying that? His manifest presence is there when people come together in mm -hmm. agreement mm -hmm. and in unity to worship God. And then he also said it in another context. He said, if any two should agree is touching anything, yeah. they shall ask whatsoever they will of the Father shall be done. Again, he was talking about how his presence comes together when we come together. Yeah. And that's why you know, the corporate gathering is so important. And that's why corporate prayer is also important, not just the individual prayer. Yeah. Well, Joan, we're going to go into a life app. We're going to come back and pray for you. Dick here with today's life app. And I want to talk about the whole process of change. Someone once said to me, the only people that like change are babies with dirty diapers. And you know, that says something. It talks about our natural resistance to change. How about you? Have you ever felt like you don't want to change? Uh, even if you're the kind of person that says, oh, I love change, the reality is you don't like change. You know, one of the things I used to always jokingly poke fun at when I pastored a church, I had a church of about a thousand people for a number of years, and I would poke fun at this because every week at our Sunday morning, Sunday evening services, you'd look out and people are sitting in the exact same seats. And then sometimes a visitor would come in and sit in those seats. And wow, you'd see these people, they're looking confused, like, where am I going to sit? Well, you know, we had a thousand seats. What's the problem, you know? Or 800 anyway, and, and uh, you can find another seat, right? Shows you how we get so set into um, a form and we don't like change. Uh, you know, anything that upsets our routine. Change is reality. Here's a little story. I like it from the Peanuts cartoon. Charlie Brown says to Linus, perhaps you can give me an answer. Linus, you remember little Linus? What would you do if you felt like no one liked you? Linus replied, I'd try to look at myself objectively and see what I could do to improve. That's my answer, Charlie Brown. To which Charlie Brown replies, I hate that answer. Isn't that the way we are? We want to change but we hate the process of change. Change is reality to us. It is, you know what, you're either going into change, you're in the middle of change, or you're just coming out of a change, which the cycle will repeat. Leaders have to change, believers have to change. You know, the scripture says we're going from glory to glory. It's already saying that we are moving in terms of maturity, in terms of spiritual growth. Even your failures, are actually signposts, measuring posts 
on your way to change. By the way, one of the most brutal agents of change in our lives is failure. Uh, let me know. Uh, I can tell you that uh, by personal experience, I can let you know that it, it's true. Um, people don't like change though, and the reason is often change isn't self-initiated. As a matter of fact, if it were self-initiated, it would seldom happen. Change often comes to us. It's imposed on us. You know, Joan and I, three and some years ago, uh, suddenly nothing. Everything that we had was gone, and um, I'm not sure that was, I don't believe that was the right way that that process should be handled, but the fact of the matter is that if you are the right kind of person responding in the right way, you can be taken out of something. See, my life isn't about things. My life is about the measure of God's blessing and His calling on my life. And that's true for you. Have you lost everything? Have you gone through bankruptcy? Did you go through a divorce? Feel like you've lost everything? And it can feel that way for a period of time. But God can restore because His blessing never leaves your life. You know, routine is dis disrupted. Your life is disrupted through change. Your whole comfort zones are, are changed. Uh, there's a fear of the unknown that assaults us when we're facing change. Uh, we often want to stay with the status quo. Let's say we have uh, retirement plans in place. Certainly that affected me. Do you know that God blessed me financially more in the years that followed after that whole thing that happened to us, that failure and that whole issue? Do you know that God blessed us financially more than ever before? I think in part it was because I had chosen to say I will do whatever it takes to change. I promised Joan, I said, I will look after you financially and every other way, but I, more importantly, will be the man you need to be. Do you know, Joan and I have a better marriage today, and we say it to each other on a regular basis. People that don't believe me, I say, go ask Joan privately when I'm not around. You will find out that we both sincerely believe our relationship is better than ever before. People ask Joan, including very close family members, how can it be, Joan? How can it be that you are happier than ever before? Joan says, yeah, I know. It's, it's really, really hard to believe. It's really hard to believe, but it's true. And it can only be because God affects change that produces godly fruit in our lives. So, what is today's life app? Embrace change, even when it's imposed on you, because it'll bear fruit in your life. In Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 9, it says, Two are better than one. It says, If one falls, the other will lift him up. But I know that many of you watching today are feeling very much alone. Maybe you're single, you're widowed. Maybe you're the only Christian in your family or in your workplace. Maybe you live in a small, isolated town where there's no really good church for you to plug into. And you long, you are longing for someone that will listen to you. You're longing for someone who cares, someone who will pray, someone who will lift you up. Well, I want you to know that we have intercessors in the Lifeline Today Prayer Center who want to be that someone in your life. They will pray for you. They will listen. They do care. And so I want you to call us right now. The number's on your screen, 403-942-0123. Yeah, we know we have a great prayer center, and you know, Joan, it's so encouraging too because it's not just during the program. They'll pray at other times, and uh, many do call uh, when the program isn't on air, and mm -hmm. there are people that will take, either gets the message, it'll, or gets the pass message along. and sends it along to the prayer center. Right, yeah. And anyway, they, they meet at regular times to just yeah. really pray, so it's not prayed for once, it's prayed for over and over again. Yeah. And, uh, in that, and so that process just kind of continues. And so, you know, mm -hmm. we do hear, I just got a few that have called in and said uh, a praise report because of the prayers that mm -hmm. have come in. This lady, her name is Rebecca, says that she called for her husband and now he's recovering from lung surgery and doing much better. Uh, Donna called to say that she was having panic attacks and she said God has delivered her, set her That's free. Awesome. Here's another couple, this is a little different, they called to say 
that they just found you and I on air on television. <laughs> and uh, they're so thankful that we have a passion for Canada and to see us back on uh, television. Well, yeah, it was a bit of a process getting back on TV. And mm -hmm. I want to just say uh, this is just the beginning. We see a much greater presence in the future. We'll not sure exactly how, but you know, as the ministry grows, as your support grows, as your partnership grows, we're mm -hmm. really allowed to do that. But God is opening those doors, isn't he? But Dick, this is one of the things that we always love to do on television is to take some time to minister and to pray for our viewers. And we have some time to do that today on the program. So, you know, we're talking about um, doors that have been locked and people who feel like they're stuck. They're, they're not going backward, not going forward, but they're just in a place in their lives where nothing is happening. There's no breakthrough. And I want to take some time to pray for these people mm. today. I had a, a just a little vision in my spirit of, while we were listening even to the prophetic word, of someone going up an elevator, an escalator that was going down. And you know, when you do that, you can move your feet up one step another step, another step, but you're standing in the same position. You're not going anywhere. You're not progressing. And there are reasons, I think, that some people feel locked up. And Dick, we talked just in the little break there about some of those reasons. And I think um, some of them have been, you know, hurt, trauma, uh, has taken place divorce. in people's lives, divorce. Bankruptcy. Um, a huge one <coughs> is inner vows. Yeah. And inner vow of hurt, is something right? that you vow within yourself because of hurt. I'll never be hurt again. I'll never let that happen to me again. And so therefore, you're, you can't really trust God with your future. And he can't open the doors and he wants you to go forward. He wants you to be blessed. He wants you to have a future, but you have locked yourself up because you have said, I'll never let that happen. I'll never be hurt again. You know, I really feel we're talking yeah, to people and today. And you know, in the, the Life app that we had on the program today, yeah. one of the things I said is that people can go through things. Sometimes change is imposed on us and it's often circumstances yes, that we don't like. And we you and like. I know about that. Mm -hmm. So, but, and, and the, uh, I said in there, and we need to embrace change. But yeah. first thing that I had to address is that the, the belief in your heart that it can never be better, mm -hmm. that whatever it was can never be restored, it can never be better than before, yeah. or, or that it can never be the same as before. And you, your <laughs> comment was, no, it won't be the same, it It'll can be, be better. better. <laughs> and that is true, that God always has a better plan for us. Yeah. And I believe we are speaking to people that need to hear this, yes, that right. no matter what crossroads you came into your life, maybe it wasn't a crossroad, maybe it was a T intersection, and mm -hmm. you feel like life has stopped for you. Like Joan said, you're going up an escalator, but it's not going anywhere. <laughs> and, uh, and you know, you feel like that's the end, and that you don't see any hope or vision beyond this. But listen yeah. to me, God is greater than anything that you can perceive in your life right now. Hmm. I know people, and there are numerous people that have testimonies of the same as that we do, is when it seems hopeless, but God, he can turn it and all it around. And it really seemed hopeless with us, Dick. So, you know, you're talking to two people who know what we're talking about. Yeah. Well, and, and that, <laughs> it, we have to remember, that's a perception. Yeah, right. And, and it's a very real perception to yes, you, right. but the truth says that God has a way where there is no way. That's right. God has a way means, it, and allowing you to go through things sometimes is his grace as well, because it changes us to become the people he wants us he to be. He does never cause the circumstances, but he will use the circumstances to build character in you and to make you a better person and to be able to carry something greater than what you carried in the past. You know, Joan, you've mentioned a couple things and I think we should say them. When people go through those kinds of things, mm -hmm. they have several responses. They either lose hope, mm -hmm. that's like suicidal, mm -hmm. or they become hurt. Yeah. And when they're hurt, they suddenly take they on the hurt back. of everybody around them. Yes, they do. And so they just go from hurt to hurt to hurt wow. without realizing that I have to allow that initial hurt in my life to be healed so mm -hmm. I'm not reacting to hurt <laughs> over and over again. Because yeah. every time something happens, that hurt is like it's a brand new wound. It's true. I just want to talk a little bit about Psalm 73 because it's so applicable right now. There was a man named Asaph who wrote this psalm. And you know, Asaph was actually a priest who headed the ministry of music yes. in the temple. <clears throat> and here, here was where he was. He said, 
But as for me, my feet had almost stumbled. My steps had nearly slipped, for when I was envious of the, boast, uh, the boastful, and when I saw the prosperity of the wicked, he said it really discouraged him. And uh, of course, because it looked like, he said, I have cleansed my heart in vain and washed my hands in innocent for all the day long I've been plagued and chastened every morning. He said it was too painful for him, but here was the key. And this is a key. He says, until I went into the sanctuary and I entered into the praise and worship, my eyes and my heart were open and I understood their end and I, I got a glimpse of eternity and what God's blessings for me would be. You know, many people look to other people Mm -hmm. And they say, you know, oh, it's woe true. is me. Look at them. They're blessed and I'm not blessed. But we need to put our eyes on Jesus. Yeah. And we need to be in the fellowship of believers where, like I said before, in the midst of the praise and worship or in the anointed preaching, it's like God can open his treasure chest. And the revelation that you need to get out of your circumstances is right there. We have only a little bit of time left. Mm -hmm. I want to pray for some people because I believe we're talking to people who feel they've come to that T intersection, yes, come right. to the end of the road. They don't have anywhere to turn. Lord, we lift oh, up Father. these ones who are, wow. And just mm. as I'm praying, Holy Spirit just really showed me that some, some of the people that we're praying for are having experienced some very deep wounding, wow. very deep wounds. There's been some amazing, incredible rejection that has had a, a very, very strong effect on their lives. Mm. And I just felt such a weight and a burden. And I, I just want to speak deliverance because I believe there's a spirit behind that, Joan. Yeah. It's not just the way you feel, mm -hmm. there's a spirit. And I take authority mm -hmm. over that spirit today in Jesus' name, the spirit of rejection, the spirit of wounding, the mm -hmm. spirit of isolation. We break its power over you right now. I break it over your mind. I yes. break it over your emotions. I break it over your physical body that is also responding to that mm -hmm. rejection. And I speak life. I speak the keys of the kingdom, which are Amen. life, and that more abundantly to you right now in Jesus' name. Wow. We should ask you to call. There's a, quite a number that I prayed for there, mm -hmm. Joan. They should call the prayer center. I believe that some of you are going to experience an actual deliverance, yes, like some right. weight lifting off you. And uh, I believe that's so important that you call. And Jill said this. She said, two are better than one. You need to connect with someone at the prayer center. They'll pray for you, and you will receive a key. You know, the prayer faith yes. says, shall save the sick. Amen. God bless you. Remember God this. God you. is good. All the time. All the time. God is good. See you next time. This program is supported by viewers like you, and we thank you for your partnership. We want to hear from you. Send us your prayer requests, praise reports, and comments on the program. Be sure to visit our website for up-to-date information or get in touch with us by email or phone. And don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter.